ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today I'm just doing an unscripted video for you guys now. We're just gonna run through the uh, rest of these Intel i9 CPUs which were just unveiled. So that's the 12 cores to 18 core parts. Let's jump right into it then. So the 12 core is gonna be called the i9-7920X. You can see here it's coming with a 2.9 gigahertz base clock, which, uh, wow. Uh, <laughs> but it goes up quite high, uh, the uh, 2.0 boost frequency of uh, 4.3 and the 3.0 boost frequency of 4.4 gigahertz. So that's not bad. Uh, you'll see with all of them, they have the 44 PCIe lanes. We'll talk about that a bit more a bit later. And it's going with the 140 watt TDP. But more importantly, is that price there coming in at 1,200 US dollars, which makes it $400 more expensive than the 1920X, the Threadripper 12 core. So that's quite a big price increase there. But let's move on up to the 14 core. So we see that's the 7940X. That's coming with a 3.1 gigahertz base frequency, a 4.3 gigahertz 2.0 boost, and a 4.4 gigahertz 3.0 boost. So pretty good there. Uh, TDP jumps up to 165, and that's the same for the uh, 16 and 18 cores. And once again, we see a $200 price increase there. It's going up to 1,400 US dollars. Then we have the 16 core, that's the 7960X, that's coming with a 2.8 gigahertz base clock, 4.2 uh, as the 2.0 boost, and a 4.4 on the 2.0 boost max, 3.0 boost. Now, uh, once again, 60, 165 watt TDP, and that jumps up <laughs> another 300 to 1700 US dollars, that's a lot of money guys, that's a lot of money. And finally we have the big boy of them all, the 18 core. That is the 7980XE, that's going with a 2.6 gigahertz base clock, with a 4.2 gigahertz 2.0 clock, and a 4.4 uh, gigahertz 3.0 clock. Now it's also coming with a 165 watt TDP and a $2,000 US price tag attached to it. So that is going to be double the price of the 1950X Threadripper, uh, which is uh, the 16 core Threadripper, which will be coming in at a thousand US dollars. That's quite the price increase. But let's now talk about the uh, clock speeds quickly, because I think uh, a few of you guys are going to be uh, a bit confused. Now, I'm sorry if this video is a little bit uh, basic for you, more extreme users. Um, but a few people out there, I think, get a little bit confused by this. So let's explain it. So I'll show you this second chart we have here, and that shows the Intel Turbo Boost 2.0 frequencies, and this is when uh, they're all loaded up. So we can see there, if we look at the top one, the 7980XE, that uh, when you load up all 18 cores, you're gonna see 3.4 gigahertz. So it's not actually gonna drop all the way down to its base clock like some of you guys might have assumed. And you can see this as you go down the list that uh, progressively it stays higher. Um, obviously because there's less cores there. So that's quite interesting. Basically all we can take from that is that uh, once it's all loaded up, we're not gonna see it go down to some of their base frequencies, which is something I saw some of you guys assuming out there that the 18 core, once you load it up, it's only gonna run at like 2.6 gigahertz. Uh, this is more likely where it's gonna sit at uh, with most people's use case scenarios. Now let's talk about the actual uh, page that Intel sent me to look at, their actual news page that they did the unveiling on. So if we have a look at the top of the page here, we see the first uh, bit is just sort of talking, you know, give, telling you about the CPUs, basically marketing stuff. Then we drop down, they still use that embarrassing term, the extreme mega tasking. So I was like, what is this? Come on, like, like I just, I just wanted to get to the bottom of it. Like, what are you going on about? Seriously. So <laughs> I went down, and it says extreme mega tasking, tasking workload consists of measuring the time it takes to perform a video encode using Adobe Media Encoder while playing Overwatch uh, on Ultra, not no idea what resolution it is, but whatever, we'll assume it's 1080p, and recording and streaming to Twitch. Okay, so that's what they mean by extreme megatasking. 
Now, I talk to quite a few other tech YouTubers out there, and a lot of them will play a game while they're rendering. I mean, uh, some of our videos can take quite a while to render, even though we most of us run quite uh, high-end CPUs. But I've never heard of any of them uh, streaming and uh, while they're rendering, you know, like well, what, were, what were people watching on the stream beforehand? Were you jumping back and forward between editing and that? I, I don't know what's going on, but maybe it's an unrealistic situation. We'll just put it at that. So take from that what you will. Is it a good measurement of CPU performance? Yes, I mean, that will definitely stress the CPU, that's for sure but it's not really a realistic scenario. But let's move on. It's, it's not really that big of a deal. I just, they, they could have just written just, you know, while you're rendering and streaming and gaming and everything at the same time, but whatever, we'll move on. More interestingly is that they say with up to 68 PCIe 3.0 lanes on the platform. Now some of you out there might have been, might be saying, you know, well, what, what is that supposed to mean? We just saw the graph. And uh, it says only uh, up to 44 PCIe lanes, PCI 3.0 lanes. So I, I got to try to explain this. I found a good uh, Reddit article that uh, Reddit thread, I should say, that that explained it quite well with uh, X99 versus X299. So basically, what we can take from it is that the the bottom part sums it up quite well. So Intel is connecting the CPU via the DMI to the chipset. So basically you're getting uh, 44 PCIe lanes on the CPU and you're getting 24 through the chipset. So add them together and you get 68. That's basically what they're saying. However, the issue is, is that uh, the, the 24 that are going through the chipset have to share a PCIe 3.0 times 4 link to the CPU. Uh, basically what that means is that you could be running let's say a, a super fast uh, you're gonna lose four anyway for the USB and other things but but I, I don't want to make it too confusing but if you're running a super fast m.2 SSD that's pretty much gonna saturate all of that all by itself all of the lanes through the chipset uh, your 960 pro m.2 SSD from Samsung for example um, that will saturate it uh, basically it, it's it's not 68 it, it's not you, you, the only ones that are really going to be usable are the 44. These other ones, if you use just one good uh, M.2, that will pretty much use it all up or it cause extreme bottlenecking on everything else you add in after that point. Whereas uh, the, the Threadrippers, for example, you'll see they have 64 from the CPU through, you know, on the X399 platform. Now you lose four like normal, but you still got 60 this, 60 full power, you know, you could add in what you like, 60. This is, I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from with that, but basically uh, to sum it up, you Intel are gonna say you get 68, but it's not, it's not like true, it's not 68 true lanes. It's, you know, you get 44 and you basically, it will get one good device through it, maybe two, depending on what you're gonna be running through it. Uh, and, and that's about it. Anything running through the chipset is going to be, you know, far inferior to it running through the CPU directly. So basically take it from that. Uh, it's not ideal, that is for sure. Let's move on then and talk about uh, when they're coming out. So the 12 core, the 7920X, that's going to be coming out at the end of August. And your uh, 14 core up to the big boy, the 18 core, that'll be coming out at the end of September. So not that far away. A lot of people were saying that the 18 core is going to be coming out at like the end of the year or something, but it's actually uh, a lot sooner than I think a lot of people anticipated. So what do I make of all of this then? What's my opinion on it so far? So I have three issues with it that come to mind. And as I said, this is not a scripted video, so I'm just speaking my mind right now. The first one obviously is the pricing. Um, it's going to be a lot more money and will it be worth it? I'm really, I highly doubt it. The 16 core uh, i9 will be powerful. The uh, 7960X, sorry, I'm still getting used to the names, guys. The 7960X will be more powerful than the 1950X Threadripper, judging by things I've seen so far that I cannot talk about. 
Uh, I think a lot of you could assume that given the performance that we already kind of AMD already inferred to us between the 7900X and the 1950X. So it will be more powerful. But will it be worth it for people to pay another, what, uh, 700 US dollars for it over the 1950X? I don't think so. Uh, it'll have the advantage in IPC, like we've already seen from, from the 7900X, and it will have the advantage in clock speed. Uh, however, it just won't be worth it. I, I can't see many people justifying paying $700 uh, extra for a CPU that is only going to give you, you know, maybe marginal gains, maybe 10% gains. Um, that's nothing I've seen so far. Obviously, I'm just putting that out there. That's just my opinion. However, you're going to pay a price for that as well. That that bit extra performance, obviously the price, you know, paying $700 more, but you'll also pay a lot more in power um, from everything I've seen right now. Can't say too much, but yeah, power-wise, uh, I would imagine judging by the huge power usage we saw at the 7900X, uh, you're going to pay a big price in power. You're going to also pay a big price in temps. Um, that's not surprising. Intel used a thermal interface material on all of these CPUs from what I've seen. That's not 100% confirmed, but I would believe it to be 99% correct, judging from the 7900X, which uses a thermal interface material, rather than Threadripper and all the Ryzen CPUs being soldered down. So you pay a big price in temps, and also you lose the, the uh, PCIe lanes. So overall, I wouldn't say it's worth it. I don't really know what market Intel is hoping to hit with this. Maybe people that are willing to overlook all that for the sake of just raw performance. Maybe they're doing something very important with numbers or, or you know, where that, that raw performance, they don't mind paying the price in terms of power and temps and the lanes. They just want the raw performance for some sort of application or something, some special use case scenario. Then those people will still buy it. But that's not going to be that many people. I think a lot more general consumers who have to think about money um, will go towards the thread rippers. That's just from the top of my mind right now on all these things I'm seeing so far. But hey, that's just my opinion. I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comment section down below. Do you agree with some of the things I've said here today or do you disagree? What do you think of Intel's unveiling of these CPUs? Do they look good to you? Is it something you're interested in buying or are you much more focused on Threadripper? I'd like to know what you guys think. Now I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel so you catch my Threadripper showdowns as soon as they drop. And of course all these i9s, I'll be testing all of them out as well. So definitely hit that subscribe button. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.